the color blue. Hey there guys! The truth is, I don't like dwarves very much, I'm more of an elf kind of guy. But I have to admit that this invention of them is really useful. So, keep watching the video, I have a lot of stuff to write down. White Scar Hello fellow Herders of the Blue and welcome to my channel and also welcome to another episode of Heavy Contrast, a series where I try to paint one miniature to the highest standard possible using just contrast paints and highlights. And for this episode I'm going to paint a dwarf and in all honesty all dwarves look the same to me but this apparently is a card drawn overlord Alcanat company. So let's get cracking. As you can see, we're starting from a base coat of Korax White, and I will start painting his burgundy undersuit. And for the first step on that undersuit, I'm going to do a layer of Volupus Pink. As always, I go section by section and I don't want too much pulling. This will be just an, our first coat of contrast. I will do one more over this to darken it down. This is too light. But we need this pink underneath everything else. With the Volupus being dry, or as dry as I need it to be, I'm going to apply the second layer of contrast. This will be Shai's Purple, thinned down with Magos Purple. This is two parts Shai's Purple and one part Magos Purple. With a layer of Shai's purple and Magus purple now dry, I'm going to start highlighting his undersuit and for this I'm going to use a mix of two parts Baragnar Burgundy and one part Cacophony purple. For a second highlight on the undersuit, I'm going to use pure cacophony purple. And what I will do is try to make the same thin edge highlight, the same edge highlight, but this time thinner than before. The idea here is trying to leave a line of the previous mix showing in between the contrast layer and this second highlight. Now for a final highlight on the undersuit, I'm going to do a one-to-one -one mix of Cacophony Purple and Screaming Skull. And I will do just the extreme ex highlight with this. Picking up things like corners.
with that out of the way I'm going to move into the black leather of his boots and for that I'm going to start with a layer of Grief Charger Grey. With the Grief Charger Grey now dry, please note that I also base coated the two cables that are on his helmet because I forgot about them. I'm going to do a layer of Black Templar over all those details. The Grief Charger Grey helps the Black Templar appear darker and will also help maintaining the cold look. With our layer of black turn now dry, I also again forgot to base coat another couple of cables with this, so to just look for any cables and do them that way. I also clean up everything that will be white leather using Corax White, and now I'm going to highlight the black leather. And for this, I'm going to start with Thunhawk Blue. And I will just do a thick edge highlight of Thunderhawk Blue all around our black leather details. Here on the cables, I'm just going to do a line of this on the top of each one. With that highlight done, I'm going to move into Fenrisian Grey. Now I'm going to do the exact same edge highlight, but this time I'm going to try and make it as thin as possible. The idea is to leave a line of Thunderhawk Blue showing between the contrast layer and this highlight. Now for the final highlights on the boots, I'm going to use with one grey, and I will just do very small dots of with one grey on the corners of each line. Or where two lines meet each other. With the leather and the cables now finished, I'm going to base coat with contrast paints all the rest of the details that are not metallic. And I'm going to start with this rope here. For this, I'm going to use a snake bike leather. Again, all those details were cleaned up using Corax White. And now I'm going to apply a layer of a one-to-one -one mix of Agarus Dooms and, and Basilican and Grey over all the white leather details.
will lay your rattlesnake bite leather on the rope is now dry and I'm going to take Thamesi Desert and I'm going to try to imitate the lines that are usually present on a rope like this. The natural twist on ropes. I'm just doing small diagonal lines all across the surface just like that that creates a bit more texture than is present here and I really think it looks really good otherwise this detail can look very boring And now for the final highlight on the rope, I'm going to take Screaming Skull and I'm going to highlight each of these individual segments that we have drawn in the previous step. I'm just doing a small line. In these curved sections, I'm placing my highlight on the top. But here on the flats, I'm just doing it in the middle of the rope. Small dots of this. With the rope done, I'm going to move into the white leather and I'm going to again use Screaming Skull and I'm going to edge highlight all the leather details. For the next highlight on the white leather details, I'm going to do Pallet Witch Flesh. I'm basically just shrinking the highlight I did previously with a Screaming Skull. Now for the final highlight on the white leather details, I'm going to take white and I'm going to do a dot highlight with it. I'm just basically picking up all the corners, just like that, very quickly. So that's basically all the non-metallic details painted and I'm going to move into all the metallics and I'm going to start with the steel and for this I'm going to base coat all the steel details using iron hand steel. Carodron overloads have a ton of metal on them and it seems like it's a bit random which part is which metal so just check the box or do it whatever feels good for you but a steel is the main metal here I'm going to start with it just for the sake of cleanliness With all our steel now base coated, I'm going to shade it in two different ways. First of all, I'm going to shade anything that is armor panels using Griff Charger Grey. As always, I apply it to an area and I wipe it off where I don't want it. In this case, I'm going to wipe it off from the top of the shoulder pad here directing the pigment towards the bottom.
with our wash of Griff Chatcher Grey drying, I'm going to shade the rest of the steel metallic details using a mix of one part black templar and three parts contrast medium. This will be things like his weapon here. And of course, any other metallic details like rivets, the ring here. And with this, I'm also going to paint his sword. And I'm going to do a kind of TMM effect like the box art. And I'm going to do it with the same mix. So I'm going to start here and apply it here towards the back and here towards the top. I'm cleaning my brush and I'm feathering it out like that. As you can see, the black temple is dried here on the, on the sword. I'm going to apply a second layer. As I said before, this will take less space. I'm moving my brush to the top because I want more pigment there. Clean my brush and feather it out, just like that. And you can see how easily we can create that kind of TMM effect using contrast paints. With all my steel now shaded, before highlighting it, I'm going to paint the rest of the metallic details because in the end they will all be highlighted with the same color. So I'm going to start with the copper parts of the armor and for this I'm going to use a one-to-one -one mix of Balthazar gold and fulgurite copper. This is a mix I really like and I think it gives the best copper undercoat you can find in the seat of the range. Now we're going to do the final metallic base coat because their faces are kind of a very light gold kind of bronze look. So I'm going to do the, I'm going to base coat them using canoptic alloy. You can also pick up random details with this. For example, I'm going to pick this piece of metal here on his gun. With those last metallic base coats applied, I'm going to shade them using contrast paints and I'm going to shade them using the same. This is a mix of a one part wild wood and four parts contrast medium. I'm going to apply this over my bronze part. and also the copper. With my brown wash now dry, I'm going to start painting all the copper details and from this I'm going to use full grade copper and I'm thinning it down to this sort of consistency and I'm going to basically here on the flatter side panels I'm going to layer it out to bring back the shine I want the shiny copper finish and all the rest of the details I'm basically going to do an edge highlight for example here on the rounded details 
I layer it down, like so. Here in the flatter areas, picking them out. And here on the smaller details, I'm basically going to do an almost an inch highlight. With my layer of full grade copper over on my copper details, I'm going to do an edge highlight on them using Canoptic Alloy. Canoptic Alloy is a fantastic metallic paint that has an in-between tone that is useful to highlight almost everything with it. It will work over copper, it will work over gold, and it will work over silver too. So with that highlight done on the copper details, it's time to finish highlighting all the metal details that includes the steel bits, the blue steel bits, the bronze and the copper. For this I'm going to use Stormhole Silver. On the steel details, this is very simple, I'm just going to highlight them. Try to be as neat and do a thin edge highlight as possible. Same goes for the white gold or bronze details, whatever you want to call them. This is a very weird color. So, like that on his face. But on the copper, I'm just going to do very small dots of this on the corners. Here on his sword, I'm just going to do an edge highlight. Using the side of the brush, this is quite simple. And for the center ridge, you will just have to be careful and go slowly. With all our metallics now finished, it's time to, well, finish the model. And there are just a couple of details left to paint. And one of them are these dials. And the first step will be to clean up the inside using Corax White. I will just try not to touch the sides. Just want to place the Corax White on the back. Just like that. If you mess anything up, touch it up with Stormhole Silver on the border. I'm also going to clean up his eye. This other eye is now closed, but if it were open, you should also clean that up too. With all those details now cleaned up, I'm going to paint them. I'm going to start with the eye, and for this I'm going to use Talasar Blue. I'm just dropping the Tulsa Blue into the eye, and I will then clean up the excess. While the eye dries up, I'm going to take Fresh Tears Red, and I'm going to paint the very small triangle inside of the dial here. Just like that. You may need to clean that up again with Corax White, that's not a problem. And now, for the final contrast layer, I'm going to take Black Templar and just brush it over the 
little indicator here and try not to drop it into the dial itself just painting over this small arrow here and now to finish off our model I'm going to take all through and grey and I'm going to do a very small dot of this in the middle of the blue eye and with those details finished and the base painted our card drawn overlord is done and okay I really don't like painting dwarves, I don't know why, but I really enjoy painting true metallics and this of course has been quite fun to paint. So guys, as always I really hope you enjoyed this one and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye! Do you like my videos and want to help me make them? Well there are several ways you can do that, you can follow me on social media, you have the links to all my social media in the description below. You can also check all my affiliate links in the pinned comment of this video, use those links in your next hobby purchase and help me, without any additional cost to you. I also have merch that you can see just below this video or in the shop tab of my channel. But most importantly there is Patreon and channel members, you have the link to my Patreon in the description below and in the pinned comment of the video, or if you prefer you can just click the join button below this video. Patreon and channel members help me do all the cool projects that I want to make and help me improve the quality of my videos. Don't be afraid, no content will ever be hidden behind a paywall but it's a nice way to help me and you will get something back for your generosity. Said so guys, thank you very much for watching and a special thank you to Daniel Figueiredo, Heather Hampstead, Lauren Sigismundi, Ben Morin, Victor Domen, Michael Boye, Christoph Moret, Joshua Bohannon, Ryan Mann, Beltrain, Patrick Ketsisis, Javi Mota, Kevin Sulas, Kieran Murphy, Leonard Lindemann, Jonathan Ekelun, Dr. V, G4, Eldrick Ketch, Asha Pag, Yeti Butler, Josh Simpson, Dominic Trevito, Richard Kierkowski, Brent Sillinger, Mark Jarvis, Gary Smith, Lucas War, Matteo de Rienzo, Aaron Del Natius Maximus, Samuel, Supernerf, Aequitas and Chris Fiby for being the coolest persons in the planet. Be like these fine folk, join my Patreon and take control.